7th of November 2014, in city Chelyabinsk, Russia, 17-year-old Yelena Patrushova told her parents that she is going to visit her friend's birthday in another neighborhood. Yelena didn't take a phone charger with her, and it meant that she didn't plan to stay at her friend's house for the night. She also didn't return till late night, so Yelena's parents felt worried and started calling her friends. Soon, they found out that Yelena doesn't even have any friends in that neighborhood. On the next day, the whole town was talking about Yelena's disappearance. In the news and social networks, the last person to see her was her boyfriend, Kirill. He said that he was on the bus with her and that she left to go to the birthday party and he stayed on the bus to go to the military academy where he was studying. Some people thought that Kirill is hiding something. On Saturday, 8th of November, Yelena's parents reached out to police. People also started joining the search. Volunteers were searching all over town and were posting Yelena's photographs everywhere. Her boyfriend Kirill, though, still wasn't helping much. When people started accusing him of inaction, Kirill posted on his page. For those who say that I do nothing, I will say, 80% of my time I spend with police and help the investigation. If you want to get any information, just reach out to them. Any extra word can end up in jail sentence for me. Obviously, it sounded very suspicious. If he is innocent, why something he say can lead to his jail sentence? In the meantime, search continued. Volunteers worked in every neighborhood of Chelyabinsk. At some point, somebody even called the police telling that Yelena was found and she is now taken to the hospital. But this call was a lie. It seemed like someone tried to take the search off track. Days have passed, still no sign of Yelena. At some point, even the help of psychics was used and one of them said that Yelena is dead and her body is left in the forest. And they also said that her boyfriend and his friend know something about this. 14th of November, information about Lena's disappearance was sent through the federal search. It meant that police officers all over Russia have gotten Lena's information. It was done because it was already possible that Yelena was taken far away from Chelyabinsk. Since the day Yelena disappeared, investigators suspected that Kirill had something to do with it. It was clear that he was the last person that saw her as they allegedly met and were together on the same bus. But Kirill was giving confusing testimony and he refused to take a polygraph test because, as he said, he had heart problems. The city Chelyabinsk has a lot of surveillance cameras and the moment Kirill and Yelena left her apartment building was recorded. But then, any trace of Yelena was gone. There was no footage of Yelena leaving the bus on the bus stop. Kirill also told the story that Yelena was going to visit her friend's birthday, but after detectives checked, they found out that this friend doesn't live in that neighborhood. Yelena's parents also started their own investigation, and they found the video from the surveillance camera where Kirill and his stepbrother Maxim Valishin returned to Kirill's home that day, but they were going not from the bus stop, but from the opposite direction. There were also rumors that, that same evening, two girls went to party with Kirill and his brother in his apartment. This was also weird if Kirill actually cared and worried about his girlfriend's disappearance. People were also exploring Kirill's page in Vkontakte, which is just the Russian analog of Facebook. And the impression Kirill's page was leaving wasn't too good. In 2011, he became a hero of a reality show about misbehaving teenagers, which was called Sinful Children. He also was a member of so-called pickup movement, where teenagers and men tried to meet and date as many girls as they could, as it was some kind of competition or sport. He was posting lists of girls he seduced and their intimate photographs. While messaging one of his friends, Kirill was bragging that he seduced 224 girls. In his more recent posts, Kirill was more interested in Yelena, posting many photographs of them together. In the meantime, people of Chelyabinsk tried to find missing Lena. 
Even the students of college where Kirill studied were involved in the search. And on Saturday, November 15th, Yelena's family got horrible news. Investigation department of Chelyabinsk informed that Yelena's body was found. It was obvious that she was murdered. Yelena had bruises all over her body. Few hours before the body was found, Kirill posted, Lena, today we have an anniversary with you. Five months. On June 15th, we started dating. We had a lot of things that happened between us. Problems, mistakes and arguments. And we always came up with a solution. We had more good times, of course. Lenka, I love you very much and I believe that you are reading this. I ask you to come home. I'm waiting for you. But besides me, you have family and friends. I miss your warmth. Listen to our song, Lenka. It was playing when you agreed to date me. I love, kiss and wait. On the next day, Kirill and his stepbrother, Maxim, were arrested. Police apparently already had evidence to arrest them. Their clothes allegedly had bloodstains with Lena's blood on them. Not much time passed before suspects started talking. Kirill said to investigators that Yelena cheated on him, and he and Maxim just wanted to teach her a lesson. He said that he checked Lena's phone and found out that she was messaging a guy from her class named Konstantin. She was telling him that she wants to leave Kirill and being his girlfriend is very hard. She didn't say much else and never dated Konstantin, but Kirill and Maxim thought that she acted disrespectful and needs to be punished. They decided to beat Yelena up. Kirill told her that they need to talk and they both walked to the remote spot in the forest where Maxim was already waiting for them. Then Kirill have shown Yelena her messages to her friend that he printed on paper beforehand. They started arguing and at some point Maxim hit Yelena. And when she fell, both of them started beating her up. Because Lena was hit in the chest, she wasn't able to scream. When they realized that Lena is dead, Kirill and Maxim took her body to the closest bush and just covered it with leaves and branches. While on the interrogations, Kirill acted very calmly and cynical. He didn't even try to ask Lena's relatives for forgiveness. He probably didn't truly understand that what was happening was serious and his life might be over. Blankov and Vershinin were telling that they never planned to kill Lena. They just wanted to beat her up. Kirill, when he realized that his situation is in fact very serious, decided to base his defense on the fact that he killed in the heat of passion. When the trial started, he started telling that while they were arguing, Lena insulted him and he just lost control. In Russia, heat of passion can be recognized as mitigating circumstance, but it should be confirmed by psychiatrists. Prosecution stated that Valishin and Plankov planned everything beforehand and both of them had their own role. Maxim had to come one hour earlier on the spot they chose and wait for Kirill and Yelena. He knew martial arts, so they planned that he will use a move to knock Yelena to the ground, and then he and Kirill wanted to hit her a few times. But when they did this, both Kirill and Maxim started beating Lena viciously and didn't stop until she was dead. After they realized that Lena is not breathing, they took her wallet and mobile phone, probably to make it look like a robbery. Because everything was planned, the defense strategy didn't work. Maxim, on the other hand, was saying that he didn't take any part in killing Lena. He said he only helped Kirill hiding the body. Kirill's lawyer also was insisting that Kirill wanted to go to police and surrender, but he was too afraid of people's outrage. Messages between Kirill and Lena were also presented in court, where Kirill demanded Lena to delete someone from her friends list, but she refused to do it. The message that allegedly made Kirill furious that he found on Lena's phone was sent by Konstantin, and he just said, I just don't want him to hurt you anymore. While Kirill and Maxim were already arrested, among all of the people who started demanding justice, some were supporting them and they believed that they are innocent and just confessed to beating Lena to death under pressure. People even created groups in the internet discussing different theories of Lena's murder. There even was a theory that there is a mysterious gang of three men 
killing women in Chelyabinsk. At some point, Kirill started feeling so much support that he even asked people to help him financially through his VK page. He said, I'm very sorry, thank you for your support, I really appreciate it. If you can just send me 10 rubles, at least, I'd be very thankful. 17th of June 2015 was the sentencing day. Kirill and Maxim looked very nervous. Judge described horrific beating that Lena became the victim of and the multiple ruptures of larynx and broken neck that led to Lena's death. Maxim Valishin was sentenced to 16 years in high security prison and Kirill Plankov was sentenced to 17 and a half years in high security prison, where they remain to this day.